Hello everyone and welcome back to Gridiron 2023. I'm the Newcastle News Sports Editor Ron Poniwaz, joined by Newcastle News Sports Writer Cody W. Pattison. We're going to talk about our eight Lawrence County football teams as we have just completed uh, our production of the kickoff 2023 football tab. Cody's been around at most of the uh, schools, if not all of the schools. And we're going to have a, a short preview here, starting with Newcastle, which Newcastle finished 1-9 and nine last year. But uh, they do return back Malik Jefferson, Kayvon Gardner, and Cairo Harris. So that's a pretty good nucleus to uh, you know return for this year. It is uh, Cairo Harris. Harris is getting uh, more comfortable in that QB position, kind of thrown into the fray as a, a freshman last year. And... Uh, the big elephant in the room, obviously, was the season's uh, record, and Stacy Robinson said, you know, stand and then withstand is uh, what they'll need to do throughout this season, and avoiding injuries is also a uh, big thing with a smaller roster that Newcastle has, uh, smaller than expected this season, probably. You know, we, we went to uh, Taggart Stadium on opening day, and, and last year, Newcastle had 63 guys out for the team on opening day, their roster uh, as the season opened was 68. Stacy told us at the end of the season it was 35. They were down to 35 kids. How does a team put that in the rear view and, and focus on a new year? Already the, the season opens with 44 kids on the roster. I think you probably just try and put it in the back of your mind for a 4A school, but also you just recruit, 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 and try and get more bodies out there You know, as it progresses. Elwood City Lincoln goes 2-8 and eight last year in Dan Bradley's first season at the helm. The Wolverines snapped a 27-game losing streak last season, and they figured to be moving on up a little bit, gra taking baby steps, uh, baby steps gradually. Yeah, uh, second uh, year for Dan Bradley at the helm, like you said, uh, looking to build off of winning a few last season, and uh, they got a great advantage this season with only two road games. Mm-hmm. Laurel had a great season last year, I believe 9-2 and two under Brian Cooper. They lost by two points in the WPIO quarterfinals last year to eventual WPIO champion Union, and Union also was the state runner-up as well. However, the Spartans are going to be hit uh, by hard times with graduation. Uh, ben Hennon, running back, figures to be a key piece of that uh, Spartans uh, offense. And Keegan O'Brien is, I believe, their lone returning starter from last year. So... You know, as far as that goes, we're going to be seeing a lot of new faces up front and all over the team for Laurel. Yeah, it's a young team coming in the fray, and it'll be interesting to see what uh, Brian Cooper does with this team for the season and where they stand at the end. Mm -hmm. How about Mohawk? Quarterback Jay Rona returns, as does wide receiver Bobby Fadden. They, ha they only have three playoff wins in uh, program history, and they've never been past the quarterfinals. However, with a quarterback returning, uh, the wide receiver returning. They have other uh, key guys all around all around the field. How much do you uh, look at uh, Mohawk and say this team, you know, built for success this year? Well, it's funny, you know. In my notes, I have Jay Rona, Bobby Fad, right there. It's back in action with a lot of experienced players, and it's going to be air game with Rona returning, who led the county in passing, and his cousin is Bobby Fadden, who led the county in receiving yards. Those two will be key components, and it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, Rona's a senior, so this is the year to to get it done, as he is a prolific passer. Nishanik, eleven and two last year. They lost to Steel Valley in the semifinals. They lost a lot of key parts as well. Johnny Huff. I believe they're top five runner uh, rushers from last year and their top two receivers. So they got a lot of uh, building to do in terms of uh, getting you know, talent in those places. Yeah, it was uh, close last year going into the Whitfield Championship, but they fell short. And uh, don't doubt that they use the, they're they not going to use that as fuel this season. And you kind of mentioned the personnel changes. I talked with uh, Coach Mazzocco. He said Gino Mazzocco is has been – Johnny Huff's understudy, and you know he can't wait to see what happens when the bullets start flying. Like he said, right? Shenango two and eight last year with wins over Northgate and Summit Academy. Uh, they do get quarterback Sam Patton back. They scored a lot of points in their two wins and gave up a lot of points in their eight losses. However, as I mentioned, Sam Patton's back at quarterback, so that's something for uh, the Wildcats to build on. Uh, quickness, that is what the Wildcats will be using as an advantage this season. They don't have a lot of you know, big players, but they're going to try and use their speed to their advantage. And it's still a relatively young team with a lot of freshmen. 
they used last year coming back, and they got a lot of experience. And Sam Patton, as you said, he returns as QB. He leads the offense, while Colton Fadrizi has been a leader on the defensive end for that team. Something that we can't or haven't been able to say for a long time, Union High is the defending WPIO champs and state runner-up as well. And this year they have a lot of guys back in, t in terms of uh, their talent from last year. Braylon Thomas, Dane Jonke, Grayson Blakely, Mike Gunn. How's that going to uh, affect them? Because now they're pretty much in the favorites role, and they've never really been in that role. They've, they've usually been in the underdog role. If you talk with Kim Needball, he always says, you know, it's a new team, a new identity, clean slate each year. And, you know, will it be round two for the U? It's hard to say. You know, it's a, it was a horse, historical season last year with the introduction of Kim Nibala, and it's less more uh, less introductions this year, more business per usual. And Wilmington High finished 3-7 and seven last year. When's the last time you could say that about a Greyhounds team uh, finishing below 500 and that far below 500? However, it was a playoff year for Wilmington. They lost 21-14 uh, in the first round uh, of the playoffs. They, lost, they also lost Tuff McConaughey to uh, transfer. He transferred to Girard, Ohio. Had a really nice performance in the season opener. Threw for over 300 yards and two or three touchdowns, something like that. So, I mean, that's almost half a year at, at Wilmington. So he, he displayed what he's t uh, capable of. This year on the roster, it looks like Buda Book uh, is going to be their starting quarterback. He's a senior from the roster. I believe they only had one other quarterback, and he's a freshman. So process of elimination looks like Buda Book's uh, job at, uh, at Wilmington. Yeah, more personnel changes with another loss of a QB, but that happens in high school football. And uh, Terry Varelli is back uh, with, uh, and to help uh, coach Brandon Philly. And so it should be interesting to see the offensive side of things for this year for Wilmington. Yeah, a lot of uh, underclassmen. They have uh, precious few seniors and juniors, and the rest of their uh, roster is made up of uh, sophomores and freshmen. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Wilmington does this year. So any other thoughts, Cody, as uh, we enter the season uh, just in a couple nights from now? Nope, it's just uh, anticipation to watch that first kickoff. Yes, and uh, so make sure you uh, grab the uh, Friday newspaper as the kickoff 2023 will appear in the Friday newspaper. We've been working on that. We have previews on all eight county schools. We also have a preview that we used from the Sharon Herald on Kennedy Catholic and a uh, short feature story on Geno Stone and Malik Hooker as well. So be sure to check that out. It comes in uh, Friday's newspaper. And we'll have uh, throughout the year, we'll have uh, coverage on all of our county schools on the, in the daily pages and online here at the Newcastle News, so be sure to check it out. He's Cody W. Pattison, and I'm Ron Pawnee-Waz. We'll see you on the high school football trail, which is coming around the corner real quick. There's one thing I learned growing up around here. People should look out for each other, be friends and neighbors that you can count on. So it bothers me when people who are hurt in automobile accidents get bullied by the insurance company. I don't let bullies run over my clients. I do what I was taught growing up. Step up, stand up, and speak up for those who can't. I'm Larry Kelly, and I'm a Newcastle guy.